Hello, welcome to a new video today. We are again in a beautiful summer setting for you and um, we're going to talk about our musical education, our teachers and our memories with our teachers and yeah, what we could have done maybe better and yeah. And what they could have done better. No, <laughs> not that. <laughs> yeah, at the end we are, we are responsible for our own choices. So yeah, you start. What yes. was the best thing that have happened to you? Except for meeting you, of course. Of course. Yeah, well, uh, I think it was meeting my first piano teacher, uh, Maria Bodo, in Romania. Uh, so I was six and a half years old and my father was starting to give lessons to me. But of course, he was not a professional. And I think through a contact, mutual contact, he uh, got to know her. And it was a great decision that um, he said, okay, she, she will be my teacher because I think she's really, she has really been the most influential um, teacher in my f first years. And uh, I think I learned almost everything from her. And without her, I wouldn't be here, you know, talking about music. Yeah, well, you know, we always have so many differences, but this is really... <laughs> <laughs> a good point and a good common point for both of us. You know, my teacher, Professor Meral Yapalde, uh, in Istanbul, so, well, without her, of course, I wouldn't have even probably considered to become a professional pianist. So, I actually started with her daughter, uh, Nihan Yapalde, and um, because she had, she was an active pianist and she had a lot of concerts to play, so she always kind of passed me to her mother who has been teacher of my mother, <laughs> which is like, yeah. But it's so interesting to have a teacher who is also an active pianist. And it's also, I think, extremely important to have a teacher who really cares about young children who just start to play the piano. I mean, normally in Germany, it's like when you start to play the piano, you are with somebody who actually, who knows how to deal with children, but he or she doesn't really know how to handle a professional pianist and in, 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 in my case it yeah. was like my teacher had everybody from age of six until 25 so that is so true it was exactly also my my uh, position in Meralia Palace class Meraloja I have to call her and yeah which it was a very intense teacher student relationship I mean it was actually not anymore just teacher-student relationship. We, I was uh, every weekend, almost every weekend, while I was going to German high school after I was like 13, 14, I was going to her house. And, um, you know, she has a beautiful house at the Bosporus, um, you know, freestanding so we could practice if we wanted the whole time. And I was never the only student there. She had also like at least one more. And you know, we would do everything together, whole weekend long. You know, we would wake up, prepare breakfast together, and then taking our coffee and going to practice. So this is probably a habit that... <laughs> Sounds like a second family to me. <laughs> yeah, yes. in, our, in our case, it was, it was also very similar. It was maybe the contrary that I didn't go to her place. So when we moved to Germany, my family moved to Germany, uh, my father asked her to come and visit us. You know, she would come for two weeks in summer, she would stay um, between Christmas and New Year's Eve with us. So she was kind of part of our family. Yes. And, um, you know, the amount of lessons that I got from her, it's just uncountable. And um, I feel really, really happy that I had this special relationship. Um, of course, also, you know, it, it can be very intense <laughs> working every day, several hours with the same person. But, you know, I thought it was, it was a great chance for me to, to really get to the core of everything. Which is actually amazing. I don't, I cannot imagine nowadays that kids are getting such intense attention. Would you, I mean, if you would teach, would you do something like that? No. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you, you really have to sacrifice no. so much. <laughs> I just thought and, again, and no. <laughs> and, and, and you have to... Would you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, I think it's a, it's a great personal... Um, Personal sacrifice. passion, passion. Also. Yeah, passion. It can't be just a sacrifice, but then one would mm. feel really depressed because that was my teacher's style to teach like that. I was not the only student, but also not every student was going to her place and staying over the weekends and of course during summer, really for longer periods. And I, I forgot to mention that she had several cats. <laughs> And you know, like, we would practice and then in the evening we would come down and we'd prepare dinner and then everyone would take their plates and we would, like, watch a great film all together in front of TV and eat or listen to great music and discuss about that or discuss about our personal lives or gossip about others' personal lives, <laughs> other people's personal lives. I remember I, I used to call these periods camps, you know, like musical camps I was going, because it was from so many sides, so much different than from my own family. Although my family is a musician, they totally think and click differently than my teacher. And she opened the doors of a very broad and open-minded world for me, I can really say. and. And yeah, and we practiced, we practiced a lot. Maybe we should also make a video one day just really in front of the piano and what we practiced and how we practiced. And probably it's also very different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It yeah. would be a crazy video, yes. Yes. So, and uh, I think that what we also have in common, so we both started with female teachers and then we, when we moved uh, to Germany, we, we continued with male ones. Yeah, but the real difference is you continued to the German uh, school because probably your Romanian teacher had more Russian school, I would... It was also Hungarian influence, yeah. uh, you know, talking about strictness and about rules and about, you know, being clear about what, what you have to do. It was also quite Hungarian because... It's uh, also quite Russian, but yeah. Yeah. I had three teachers that I think I learned a lot from all three of them, so it was mm -hmm. Kurt Hansch uh, in Rosenheim where I was going, um, having my school education as well. And then I started with Kemmerling, mm -hmm. Professor Karl-Heinz Kemmerling in Salzburg. And finally I met Alfred Brendel when I was 25 years old and I thought I was already a grown-up uh, piano player and I knew how to play. And he taught me, you know, some, some new things. Did you actually start from the beginning? No. No, of course not. But yeah, well, you had really much more influential teachers, I think, than I did. Because, um, well, Karl Heinz Kemmerling was like a piano pianist fabric, yeah. <laughs> as I recall. And um, yeah, my teacher was that pianist fabric in Turkey, or has been and is. Um, but then I went to study with uh, Vasily Lobanov, and I tried. Uh, working with him and it worked really well so uh, and he was a great pianist also I have to say I still adore his way of playing I still remember it very clearly and I went to Cologne to study with him it was totally different two styles you know Melody was really into like this um, talking to me about everything you know she, she was like a extremely like the most important figure in my life actually mother figure a grandmother figure a teacher figure and everything and I, when i went to germany my teacher was my teacher i had a lesson once a week in a um yeah in the holiday times i didn't have any lesson at all and you know there was on some point someone who really cared about what i was doing if i was practicing if i was you know giving concerts what kind of concerts and then in germany I was just kind of, yeah, being taught and kind of left alone at that time. The same, same happened with me and I think that's also why my father thought I could use more and more inspiration from d different sides. So uh, I remember times when I actually had like four teachers at the same time or I also learned violin, I also went to 
uh, singing lessons. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so you became a nerdy. musician all in all. <laughs> a whole musician. I'm not joking. Yeah. I actually are one. Yeah, don't don't ask me how my violin playing sounds now. It doesn't matter, it's just the yeah, the touch you got while yeah. you were growing up. I think that's that's the most important thing. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I really had very little amount of teachers. I also went to very little amount of master classes. So this is probably what I would definitely suggest younger musicians or would have done differently. Probably I shouldn't have also stayed that long in Cologne. I could have changed the Hochschule or my teacher. Then, of course, I studied with speedy chamber music, which was like, anyway, my dream from the beginning on. So, I mean, he's an amazing teacher, but, but the style is still kind of the same. You know, you teach and then you're alone. And um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I think about my education, probably what I've done uh, differently I mean, knowing it now, I probably would have approached Brendel earlier um, because I was already 25 and uh, I, at that time I, I kind of thought I, I was kind of settled as a pianist and I, I knew how to play, I had my own ideas. You know, I thought I was, I was kind of a, um, how do you say, I thought I was... Already you know, something. Already something. Which I was, uh, um, but you know, he just opened up some new world for me, and it was so overwhelming. And I'm extremely thankful for that because I think, as a pianist, when you work alone and you're you know on your own for so many years, um, you really have to have an, a vision of how you want to play in 20 years, in 30 years, in 40 years. And I think he opened that vision for me. But uh, now I think um, I should have gone there earlier. As I said, I would probably should have had more teachers, more inspirations and more ideas. And um, I had this kind of thought, so I should go with one and not, you know, confuse myself with other ideas. But actually, I mean, it, it's a part of being a musician, being confused. So to be able to find your own way, you have to be confused at first. So, um, yeah, I kind of regret that. But do you have some, some kind of weird stories about your teachers? I mean, uh, of course we... What kind of weird stories? <laughs> what are you talking about? No, I'm just saying that we have been talking about our teachers and how great they were and how great they are. But, you know, sometimes, I mean, everybody has some flaws and... And I remember that my first teacher in Romania, that she, she had always this kind of fear that, because she, she knew so many things, she always feared that, you know, somebody else would steal that from, from us or from me. And she was, you know, telling stories of colleagues that were going to competitions and then they met, he met a girl and this girl was very nice to him, but she only wanted to steal, you know, his, his pianistical secrets. And it was so, so wild stories that I, I, I found it <laughs> extremely funny. But I think she was really worried that, you know. Oh, I think, you know, she's a woman. Maybe she was actually worried that you would fall in love in a competition with a girl. And yeah, then your probably. mind would get confused, so. Yeah, probably it was yeah. not about stealing the secrets, but. <laughs> yeah, stealing your. <laughs> stealing my concentration. Concentration <laughs> and attention, because that was also the biggest fear of my teacher. Actually, it was always. Um, uh, if I would get attracted to a guy, she would always want it. That, that she always hoped that he would be really far away <laughs> and not nearby so that I wouldn't, you know, stop practicing and wanting to meet him or something. Yeah, when you first told me the story, I never thought it would be that, but when you just started now and said a girl could come to you and be nice, then I immediately recalled it and <laughs> saw the reflection of my own teacher. Yeah, it's, it's funny, yeah. And of course, I mean, how do you, we, you know, we talk about that there were so good teachers and everything, but how do you realize? How would, you know, kids realize a good teacher or, or their parents, let's say? 
Uh, I think it's important that uh, you have the feeling or you can see that the teacher reads you. He can read uh, not only what you are now, but only uh, also what you can be in the future. Like what kind of abilities does a student uh, or a young kid have? In which direction could it go? When I was studying with my late teacher, Karl-Heinz Kemmerling, I mean, of course, he was a great musician as well. He had a, f you know, some kind of gut feeling about how to explain music. But he also had this kind of incredible class with so many gifted students, and he would create this kind of atmosphere where everybody was, you know, kind of um, in some kind of nice but clear rivalry. rivalry. And uh, I think through that he also achieved this kind of, you know, steady pace of everybody just, you know, going for for one's career and, and, and seeing what the other ones were doing. And I think it's also, I mean, not that I say that this is the ideal environment, but it can be helpful um, to see other people who are, you know, working as exactly as hard as you. As a maniac. <laughs> yes, so I think we came to the end of our musical education video. Um, as you see, musical education, if you want to become a professional musician, starts at the age of five. So it's a really tough way, I would say, where you sacrifice your whole life to become a musician or study music and to become something else, but get inspired by the music all your life long. So we see, as, we see it as a big gift. Well, hope you enjoyed <laughs> this, this uh, educational journey of ours. So in the next video, we're going to talk about our transition from being a student to becoming a professional musician where we actually, yeah, can live from it. <laughs> no? Yes. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> bye.